Hello, everyone. Welcome to integrating React into a PHP application. Uh, if you want to check out the slides online, uh, that URL will bring you to the slideshow so you can follow along or uh, pull them up later. Um, I'm Andrew Rota on Twitter, um, and so you can follow me there as well. What is React? We're going to be talking about React.js, which I want to distinguish from React PHP, which is a similar name, a very different uh, thing. Um, we're going to be talking about React.js and uh, the uh, JavaScript library for building user interfaces today. And why is it important? Why should we care about it as, as PHP developers, as web application developers? Well, I'll start with React has by far the greatest market share of any front-end framework. Um, a few years ago, this might not have been clear, but I think this today is pretty clear. Um, this is a slide from, from a deck on the NPM share of registry uh, for major front-end frameworks. And it's clear that over uh, the, the percentage um, uh, relative to the rest of the NPM registry uh, for JavaScript modules, React has, has claimed quite a bit of market share in the last couple of years. And it's still growing, which is kind of crazy, because at that scale, you usually start to slow down, right? Um, React is still, still growing as a, as a front-end framework. Its popularity is still growing. This is a diagram from uh, Stack Overflow's developer survey results this year, which I found was really interesting. Um, because what it does is actually correlates uh, the use of technologies among developers who responded to the survey. And React and PHP actually fall into the same um, kind of cluster, which I thought was really interesting because um, Ruby has its own cluster, Python has its own cluster, and then it's like React and PHP are actually pretty close together. Now, I think it speaks to just the use of, of React among uh, so many uh, web application developers at this point. I think it also speaks a little bit that at this conference on PHP development, there were three um, separate talks on React. So there's, uh, there's definitely some interest in, in this topic. And I, I would guess that this is because, as developers, we want to build the best user interfaces for our users. Um, and React is one of the best tools for doing that. And I'll talk a little bit about, about that today. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how we can integrate React into our PHP applications. My name is Andrew Rota. I lead our front-end platform teams at a company called Wayfair in Boston. Today we're going to cover um, a lightning introduction to React. Uh, the primary purpose of this talk is not to go deep into React. You could do an entire workshop on that. In fact, there was one a couple days ago. Um, there was another talk on React at uh, this conference. Um, but I'll, uh, I will do a bit of lightning introduction if you're not familiar with React. I'll talk about getting started um, with client-side rendered React. I'm just running React in, uh, on, the, on, the on the client side, on the browser. And then I'll spend most of the time talking about server-side rendering architectures, um, specifically kind of from a system architecture perspective. How are we thinking about where React, um, if you want to support server-side rendering within a PHP application, where can it go? And I think if you're thinking about uh, adopting server-side rendering, this is one of the key things to, to keep in mind. Um, I'll briefly touch on the future of React uh, server-side rendering. And what I think the takeaways are that we should be thinking about whether or not we're using React at all, um, what it means to think about uh, this topic. And then I'd love to leave some time for questions um, and just have a conversation. Um, we have a, a small size group here, so I think if, if there are any questions that you have, I'd be happy to talk about those. We'll talk a little bit about what can React add to a PHP uh, web application, as well as how we can integrate React into a PHP web application. Because ultimately, I think they can complement each other. Um, even though they're two different technologies, two different languages, um, they work together in, in allowing us to build up uh, effective user interfaces for our users. And most importantly, I think using a framework like React and, and integrating it very closely in, in your web application really means making views, making the UI, a first-class aspect of your web application and thinking about it not just as an afterthought, something we add on, on later, but a key part, that, that interaction, that user interface, a key part of how our users and our customers interact with, with, our, with our websites. This is a traditional um, PHP MVC framework, or PHP MVC architecture. Um, not going to go too much into the details of this or, or, or hold too much onto the, onto the diagram. This is kind of generally how we, how we think about it. Um, where we have our model, our view, and our controller. We might have a framework on the PHP side. Maybe we have more layers and we've built up more on the server side um, piece of things. I think oftentimes when we, when we think about this uh, web application architecture, we're really focusing on this server side and we don't spend a whole bunch of time on the view and how that fits into things. And I'd like to think about our architecture um, when we build up these views, when we want to add interaction on, we just kind of sprinkle some JavaScript on the front end. Maybe we use jQuery or uh, maybe we use React, but we just kind of use it here and there um, and don't actually integrate it in how we build our application. 
And I'd like to change this a little bit. I'd like us to start thinking of uh, our view layer as kind of a key piece of our application architecture. And don't read too much into how the boxes are connected here, but I mostly want to emphasize that I, th I think the view needs to be kind of an important piece here. And in a lot of our applications where we're using a front-end framework, uh, React really is that view layer. Um, your, your framework is that view layer. It's not just something you add on top. One of the reasons to use React is it gives us the flexibility to support single-page application experiences. Um, this might not be the right uh, application experience for every, every app or website. Um, so what I mean by a single-page application is an uh, application that's rendered um, on the client side after page load, so you don't need to make a round trip to the server to get the full HTML for your, for your application every single time the user clicks on a link. Um, what I think is important here is, is having that flexibility. Uh, a, a framework like React gives us that flexibility to support that where it makes sense, where it might be the right experience for our users. And it's really about unlocking new interaction patterns. Um, the, the potential that these frameworks can um, provide is incredibly valuable, even if we don't go all in on certain features. And we, we think practically about where they should be added to our, to our site. And React makes it easy and fun uh, to manage um, this rich view logic. Um, this can be incredibly complicated. Building a single page app can be very complicated. Um, building client side interaction can be um, incredibly complicated. And React's model, I think, makes it um, easy and in terms of fun, I think it, it actually just improves the developer experience quite a bit so that it doesn't get in our way, that we can actually build out the features that we want um, without having to fight the framework that we're working with. So let's do a little bit of an introduction to React. React describes itself simply as a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Uh, there are a few characteristics of React that I think make it unique. One is that it's declarative. Um, you design views as components which accept props and return React elements. And React's gonna handle all the rendering and re-rendering on the page um, when that data changes, and you don't have to really worry about how that's implemented. It turns out that React tends to implement it in a fairly performant way. Um, that's less important than the, the actual API that you're working with. Um, we use a, uh, uh, a syntax in JavaScript called JSX, which looks like writing HTML within our JavaScript, um, which might seem a little bit weird at first, but it's actually a, a really nice way to work with uh, uh, to work with, with describing our user interfaces in terms of components. Um, it, it actually transpiles to function calls under the hood. Um, React is composable. So in addition to rendering DOM nodes, you can create components that render other components. And these compose together. And this is kind of the core building block of React. So you can create box components um, and render out the children of those components and really build out your entire application. Um, ends up being components all the way down. Your components can encapsulate state. And so you have, uh, you have the ability to, to encapsulate state within a component. Um, and then certainly when uh, state is shared across components, um, you can pull that state out. And the general uh, pattern that we want there is to pull state out into a common ancestor. You may have heard of libraries like Redux or MobX. That helps in more complex uh, state management. We're not going to go into too many of the details uh, today on that, but I just wanted to give a quick introduction there. The easiest way to integrate React with PHP is to do entirely client-side rendering. If you're getting started with React today, uh, that's what I would recommend um, starting with. It's the, the simplest way to, uh, to begin ad adding React to your site. And so it looks something like this, where you start with a root element on your page. Um, if from PHP, you would have a, uh, an empty div, say, rendered somewhere. Uh, maybe this is a small piece of your app. Maybe it's a large piece of your app. Uh, and then you'll have JavaScript. Uh, render uh, that app client side. And so react-dom.render uh, will reference the application, um, which will be a set of composed components, more than just a hello world. And it will point to the target uh, root, root node. And so from the PHP side, your, your page starts blank. Uh, and so in terms of integration here, this is pretty straightforward from the PHP side. We just render a view that has a starting point for, for React. And this might be part of an existing page, or it might be entirely new, and your entire application. Once JavaScript loads, however you load JavaScript, uh, you'll, JavaScript will render that page on the client. And then every subsequent page, as long as your React component tree continues to um, control that rendering, uh, can be rendered client side. And so you can introduce a router into your JavaScript application and simply let everything be rendered client side after that. This is a great pattern for incremental adoption of React. 
um, when you're just getting started. Uh, and so let's say you have your entire application here just simply rendered um, on the PHP side. Maybe you have views. Maybe you're using templates to, to render out HTML. Um, you can actually start by just picking one component on the page and using Re React to render that. Um, and then you could introduce another one. You could have multiple routes if you needed, or you could start to um, kind of join them together into um, a smaller number of routes. And you can have these like partial pages uh, written in React and rendered in PHP. And then eventually, if your goal is to convert everything to React, um, you have a nice path to getting there. And at a certain point, you'll have everything under a single React route. In general, you want to think about converting components from the bottom up. And that way, you can just add React from a certain, on a certain part on the page. Uh, if you're going to have multiple React routes, um, you could look at a, a feature called portals in React, which is fairly new, which allows you to have uh, to render out into different parts of the page, even if they're not in the same DOM tree that you're, you're initially working with. But we've only partially integrated React into our site. And so I think this is a great way to get started with React. And if your, your takeaway from this talk is, how do I, how do I introduce React um, into, my, into my website? I want to say start with client-side rendering. I don't think it's worth it to, uh, at first, go into something more complicated. Um, but I do want to talk about what I think is a more interesting topic. Um, which is uh, looking at server-side rendering. What is server-side rendering? Um, I'll refer to it um, as SSR as well. It's constructing the HTML for your view on the server side of your web request. In fact, if you're using a PHP framework right now and not using much um, uh, JavaScript for, on your UI side, uh, you're, you're probably already doing this. This is probably the, already the state at where you're at. And so this means our user is going to get our entire page um, on the first page request um, rendered from the server. Uh, before JavaScript even kicks in, we'll get the HTML, and the browser will go ahead and render that HTML um, immediately on the page. If we're doing this with React, then once JavaScript loads, we can hydrate uh, that server-side rendered HTML. And so the same view that React rendered on the server can then be hydrated on the client. And then again, after that, all the subsequent page views uh, can be rendered client-side. And this is where we can have kind of our SPA concept, where every initial page view, not single page application, where every initial page view is server-side rendered, and every subsequent page view um, can be client-side rendered. And if the user were to enter the, the flow on a later page, um, again, it would server-side render the first page, and every subsequent view after that could be client-side rendered. There are a few reasons to server-side render, um, and I want to uh, touch a little bit on these. Um, so the first is performance. Performance is a complicated topic. There's no one number to know how fast your site is. When we're thinking about our server execution, uh, there, are, there are some numbers that are pretty important. We can just look at how long PHP takes to run and what the uh, time to first byte is that our, that our customers get. Uh, but when we think about rendering, when we think about UI performance, it gets a little bit more complicated. What does it mean for the page to be done loading? Well, we could wait until all the JavaScript has loaded and all of our network calls have fired. But uh, the user can often start interacting with the page before that. In fact, if we didn't have JavaScript at all, the user could start interacting with the page as soon as the HTML came back. They could click on links. They could click on buttons. They could submit forms. Uh, once we add JavaScript on top of that, we might have uh, new features uh, that uh, provide some interactivity to the page that might not be available until after some JavaScript has, has kicked in. And so we think about performance for server-side rendering. I think about it as more control over performance. And so if we think, you want to think about the metrics that matter to you, that matter to your users. Um, and frequently one that we talk about is the time to first paint, or the time to first meaningful paint, or uh, a little more nuanced metric than that, and uh, speed index, so how fast you can uh, paint a percentage of the page, um, how, how fast a, uh, the page can become visually complete for the user. Uh, and server-side rendering gives us a little bit more control over that metric, because it means that we can start to paint parts of the page. We can start to return HTML that the browser will render, even before JavaScript kicks in. And so while server-side rendering is not going to get us any faster to interaction, in fact, it might get us slower to some interaction, because our server might take longer to respond since it's rendering some of the HTML, it will get us faster to uh, some of the, the items on the page being rendered in HTML. And if you're building your site in a way that that HTML is um, usable by the user, you're using links, you're using forms, uh, then the user can start interacting with the page, partially at least, 
um, before it's entirely uh, before JavaScript has has entirely kicked in. And so server side rendering can give you some some of that performance and give you a lot of control over that performance. And you can make some of those choices about how much do you want to server side render on the page versus how much do you want JavaScript to handle on the page instead. <coughs> uh, search engine optimization is another reason for uh, for server side rendering. This is a little bit of a complicated topic because there's no uh, easy handbook for uh, how uh, client-side rendered versus server-side rendered content, content will affect your search engine ratings, and it's certainly changing over time. Uh, some search engine uh, crawlers uh, won't execute JavaScript at all, um, and so if you're rendering everything on the client with JavaScript, you might not have that content available to, to search engines to, um, to index or to, to understand the content on your page. Um, however, increasingly, um, search engines do um, do index JavaScript rendered content on a page, uh, and certainly it's a little bit more complicated because you're not just getting HTML back from an initial page load. You got a uh, uh, JavaScript's going to uh, be rendering parts of the page and fusing client side router. That gets a little bit more complicated. Um, that being said, uh, I think there there's still um, some value, um, and certainly test this for yourself if search engine optimization is key for your business or key for your your product. Um, there, there generally is, is still some advantage to server-side rendering uh, some of that content. And finally, your site can work without JavaScript. I think this is something that maybe we don't care about uh, as much these days. Um, but there, there, there still is value to this, I think. Um, certainly, there are users who might disable JavaScript on your site um, or might disable JavaScript on all sites. Uh, maybe they're using um, a plugin to disable JavaScript by default for security or privacy reasons. And so if you want your site to still work, um, maybe this audience is, is important for you. Maybe your users do do this. Certainly, again, this is something you should measure. Um, but you can have a server-side rendered page with React uh, that works 100% without JavaScript. That JavaScript is completely disabled, and the actual output is just HTML for, uh, for the user. Um, it also means that you don't have a single point of failure on your site um, with JavaScript. So if uh, if something goes wrong, maybe you're, uh, you're having issues with your CDN serving JavaScript for some reason, um, your site can still run. Uh, the user can still click through the site. Um, so I think that, that can be valuable, again, depending on your product, depending on the, um, the, the type of uh, uh, web application you're building. So those are some of the reasons you might, you might want to server-side render. Um, I do want to say this isn't necessarily necessary for all applications. It might be a lot simpler just to client-side render your entire view. Um, a lot of internal applications that might not rely on search engine optimization or maybe performance is less of a concern um, uh, could go ahead and start with, with entirely client-side rendered pages, for example. React has built-in support for server-side rendering um, with a package called React DOM Server. And I think this is actually really one of the great, point, uh, great features of, of React is this uh, key support for, for server-side rendering. And so how do we server-side render a React app? So we take our same app, and we use React DOM server, and we use this really important method called render to string. And render to string will return a string of HTML um, uh, along with some, some metadata at the top level to tell React where to hook into that. Um, so that when on the client that JavaScript um, has kicked in, React DOM.hydrate uh, will take that uh, server-side rendered HTML on the page We'll attach the event listeners and pick up subsequent rendering. Um, what's great is actually won't, it doesn't need to re-render there, right? Because it can make an assumption that it already rendered on the server side um, because, of, uh, because you're hydrating existing uh, markup. So render to string and hydrate, those are the only two methods uh, you really need to be concerned about. Render to string is running on the server side, and hydrate is running on the client side. And those two things will allow you to server side render a React application and then pick up that interaction client side uh, once the page has loaded. This presents a challenge. It means that the same application code needs to be run on the, both the client and the server. Um, it's a challenge and an opportunity. Uh, this, this paradigm, this pattern, is referred to as universal JavaScript. Um, that's kind of the term that's uh, gotten the most popularity. Um, it used to be and is still, still sometimes referred to as isomorphic JavaScript as well. And set so that same application code, uh, that same JavaScript code, is run on both our client and our server. We need a way to execute on the on JavaScript on the server for this to work. And how are we going to do that if we have a PHP application? 
I think there are a few different possible architectures. Um, so I'll cover, I'll cover a few different options. And then depending on what your tech stack looks like already, uh, what some of the goals of, of adopting React are uh, might inform some of your choices between the different architectures. Uh, so we'll look at three different approaches um, in two categories. First, look at V8.js, which is running JavaScript from PHP. We'll take a look at what that looks like. And then Node.js, which is maybe a little bit more common. And that's using a standalone Node service um, uh, and making requests through that and rendering JavaScript on our server there. Um, we have two options there, and it's really where the Node server fits in. And we'll take a look at that. Server-side rendering with the V8.js extension in PHP. How many have heard of V8.js? So you may have heard of V8, which is the JavaScript engine in Chrome. Um, that is the, it's one of a few JavaScript engines that are used in browsers. Uh, V8.js is a PHP extension, which embeds the V8 JavaScript uh, engine and allows you to call it from, uh, from PHP. Um, and so it's, it's an extension uh, for PHP, and we can execute JavaScript and get a response back. Uh, to install it, there are some, uh, there are some Docker images available, um, or if you're lucky, a pre-built binary uh, for your server environment. Um, or you can compile the latest version yourself. I will warn you, this is a little bit challenging, um, having done it myself a few times, um, particularly if you're using Windows. So um, uh, there, are some, there are some challenges to this. It might or might not involve compiling V8 itself. Uh, but once you do that, you can enable the extension in PHP. And hopefully, if everything worked out, uh, you have uh, VHS available to you as a PHP extension. And what does that mean? Uh, it means that we can uh, actually execute JavaScript from within PHP. So this is JavaScript code. It's not React. Um, but I'm running this JavaScript um, in a sandbox V8 environment um, through a method called execute string. Uh, and so I won't go too much into how you could abstract this to be a little bit more um, reusable. Um, you could certainly build on top of this. And there are a few uh, PHP libraries uh, that do that, that use uh, VHIS to um, provide you a better interface for running JavaScript bundles uh, from PHP and getting output um, that can be uh, flushed to the client. There are some advantages here. Um, I guess the, the key one is it's pretty simple, right? We don't have to manage another server. Um, we don't have to uh, be running Node at all or, or worry about that. I think there are some challenges too. Um, builds can be difficult to maintain. Uh, and Node is more than just V8. V8 is the JavaScript engine there, but Node is going to give you um, some built-in libraries uh, and, and support that's not, not going to be available in just uh, vanilla V8. Uh, you're also not going to have the same debugging tooling available um, that you would with, with using Node. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't actually um, used this uh, pattern in production, and I'm not familiar with a lot of places that do. Um, so I, I wanted to show it as, as a kind of a thought experiment on, on how that architecture could be set up, um, but I don't think this, this is as common um, of, of, of a paradigm. So let's go to our, our next uh, possible approach. And that's server-side rendering with request to Node uh, from, uh, from PHP. So Node.js, if you're not familiar, is a JavaScript runtime um, built on V8, again. So it's running that same uh, V8 engine. Um, this is an entire JavaScript runtime. Uh, you might uh, be familiar with it as a standalone uh, web server. Uh, you might use something like Express, which is a, a JavaScript web uh, framework. Uh, or you might use it for tooling. Uh, it's very common to just run locally for, uh, for JavaScript tooling as well. You can install it as a standalone service. It's very common um, to be available on web hosts as, as well. Um, and for the sake of this architecture, it could be on the same, uh, same actual machine um, and just another, host, uh, another server over local host, or it could be on, um, on another server or another cluster or something like that. Um, so what does this architecture look like? means that our client is making requests to PHP, and PHP is then delegating entirely to Node to handle that render to string call. So we're render, running that server-side JavaScript instead of running it in something like VHS. We're actually running it in the Node environment over an HTTP request to a service or to a separate server uh, and getting HTML back as a response. And so we're telling Node, what is the components that I want to render? What is that, that root component that I want to render? And the response that we're getting back from the server is the rendered HTML. And we might also send to, to Node some of that initial data that we want to render, those initial props. We could even let Node make the requests for those props um, as HTTP requests from its server to, say, another service um, or even to another PHP server um, to, to get the data from your database, for example. Um, 
This architecture is great because we get full Node.js support. You can use Node debuggers here. Um, but it also means that PHP can still handle the routing and partial view rendering. You could render part of your page in PHP and then delegate part of that rendering to a Node service and get that HTML back from Node. Um, it is an additional server to manage. Um, I think that that's a little bit of a con here. Um, it might be on the same, might be on the same server. In fact, in, in, in that case, it would scale out kind of at the same, the same way you're scaling out PHP. And maybe you're, you're running it though as a separate server and you have to scale it uh, independently. Uh, a great starting point for this is a, uh, a node service that Airbnb open source called Hypernova. Um, it'll, it's a standalone service that allows you to uh, make requests from any, any server, maybe that's a Ruby server or a PHP server or a Python server, uh, and get back the response from, uh, from Hypernova from the standalone node server uh, that's already that's rendered your, uh, your React views. Uh, at Wayfair, we actually open sourced a PHP client for Hypernova. Uh, there wasn't one previously, and so we wrote a client in PHP that can handle the communication um, within, your, within your framework uh, for, for making those requests and handling that response from Hypernova. Um, and what's nice with, with using Hypernova and using a client like this is that you can make uh, requests from multiple routes. So maybe you have multiple routes that you want to be rendered um, on your page. We think back to that diagram where we're converting from the bottom up and we're converting pieces of our page. If we need to server-side render that, um, we can use a tool like Hypernova to, uh, to handle that rendering um, for us and then call Hydrate on the client side and Hydrate all the, those routes independently. I want to talk about third architecture as well, um, which is server-side rendering in Node again, um, but having those web requests go through Node and handling uh, using PHP purely as a, as a service to handle our data requests. And so this architecture looks something like this where actually our client, uh, where our users, are not hitting PHP in their initial web request. They're hitting Node, and Node is handling all that routing. Node is delegating to our rendering. It's basically our entire uh, view layer, in some sense, um, our controller layer as well. And then PHP is simply a place where we're uh, making requests for, um, for our data. And maybe PHP is making requests to a database, uh, making queries to a database, or making requests to other services or something like that. Uh, this is great, again, because you get full Node.js support. Um, and your views and your routes can actually live entirely in Node. Um, I think this is more difficult for incrementally, incrementally migrating, right? Because everything is in Node. Um, if this is integrating, um, I think this maybe brings up an interesting question as to whether this is actually integrating uh, React into PHP or if you're just replacing a large part of your stack with Node and then still using PHP uh, for, for some of the data layer, some of the service layer uh, that you want. Um, but I did want to uh, call this out because I think for, for a lot of web applications that are um, maybe not initially in PHP that are uh, thinking about uh, maybe building something new, and this architecture makes a lot of sense um, and it's pretty common. You could replace PHP with really anything there or even let Node um, make those, those database queries itself. Um, so there are a couple different approaches you can take there, but we are moving away from this being PHP-centric. Um, a common framework for, for doing this is called uh, Next.js. If you're interested in server-side rendering for React, um, uh, just standalone, maybe not necessarily with, 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 or, with or without PHP, um, Next.js is a great starting point. It's uh, a complete framework for server-side rendering uh, React in Node, and it supports a lot of uh, really cool features. Um, it has routing built in. It has code splitting built in. Uh, so it uses um, Webpack to do those builds under the hood, but you don't really need to worry about that, um, and handles that on both the client and the server. Um, it has some caching functionality um, and some data fetching functionality. It's um, pretty full featured. So if you're looking, a lot of times we'll talk about React not as a framework but as a library. Um, the distinction is a little bit, um, uh, it, it's not exactly clear, but uh, if, if React is a library, then Next.js is certainly a framework. It, it brings a lot in there. Um, but it's increasingly common for, uh, for getting started with uh, server-side rendered uh, React applications. So those are the architectures that you can use to start working with uh, React and server-side rendering um, with PHP. And if server-side rendering is important to you um, and you're using React, uh, you might be interested in the future of, of where this is going. Um, where is server-side rendering going, going with React in, in the future? React has always had support for, for server-side rendering, which has actually set it apart from some of the other front-end frameworks. Um, is that kind of built-in support to just call a function and get back, uh, get back a string of HTML. 
Uh, but it's, it hasn't been as, as fully supported and as common as just building client, entirely client-side uh, React libraries. Uh, and so as someone who, who works on a, on a site that is server-side rendered and it does use React, I'm interested in where, where that's going. One of, one of, those, um, one of the features and one of the directions um, that I think server-side rendering with React is going in is streaming server-side rendering. Um, so React, uh, as of React 16, I believe, supports uh, render to node stream. Um, and so that allows that React DOM server package, instead of calling render to string and getting back a string, we can actually get a stream um, of HTML back. And so we could get to a place where we could actually um, use this stream and just flush to the client as that content is ready. Um, depending on your performance needs, this could be incredibly valuable because we, we kind of change, we again get more flexibility over that time to first paint. Uh, and we could actually start to stream out parts of our page as they're, they're ready um, and use something like um, output buffer flush to uh, flush with HTML trunked encoding to the browser um, and get partial HTML and the browser will, will construct that and uh, allow you to uh, say render the header uh, and then render the content of the page um, and then render the footer and then JavaScript loads and we hydrate um, all at once. And so instead of this just being one frame where we have to wait for all the HTML at once, um, we could do this over incrementally um, and potentially give better performance. Um, you really see this in, uh, in speed index, so a metric that actually looks at um, you know, not just how long it takes to render the page, but how much uh, visual completeness you get while the page is rendering. Uh, this is, uh, models of this is, is, are definitely supported already, um, but in the future, one of the issues that, that we have uh, that we'd like to address is how can we actually bring some of the interaction a little bit earlier on? So maybe we can start rendering parts of the page earlier, maybe links will work and buttons will work, uh, but the user won't actually be able to interact with, with that JavaScript functionality because we're still hydrating the page all at once. And so there's definitely um, uh, work being done right now um, to be thinking about um, streaming server-side rendering with partial hydration. So how could we hydrate parts of the page as the page is rendered? So even before all the HTML is sent down, send down not just the HTML, but also the data and the JavaScript and hydrate as we go so that the user um, doesn't get kind of this in-between state where they have the HTML and don't have the interactive JavaScript. I think this is a really interesting um, possibility for very performance sensitive applications um, for really improving the user experience and um, moving away from a place where we, where we just send down HTML and they have to wait for the JavaScript, maybe 500 milliseconds for the JavaScript to kick in. Um, in the future of server-side rendering, I also think it's really important is uh, that the, the, the React core team um, that, uh, at Facebook has actually said that they'll continue uh, investing in server-side rendering. Um, Dan Mabramov uh, tweeted uh, the other day, uh, Facebook had announced that they were um, going to be rebuilding facebook.com um, uh, with React entirely. Um, they always, you already use React quite a bit, but um, they talked about some of the details uh, on how they were going to do it. And one of the interesting tweets that I thought was um, that they were actually talking about using server-side rendered uh, React code on Facebook, which historically Facebook being uh, has not as focused as much on server-side rendering. If you visit Facebook, a lot of uh, the page renders after um, initial page load through JavaScript. And uh, even with that, React still supports server-side rendering as a key feature. Um, if in the future we're going to see more investment from that um, on Facebook side, I imagine that uh, the possibilities for improving server-side rendering can, can improve um, even more. And so what are some of the takeaways um, that, that I hope you're thinking about uh, and that I was, I've also been thinking about as I've worked with React um, server-side rendering and PHP? The easiest way to get started with React is 100% client-side rendering. Um, there's no question about that. Um, I recommend using uh, a tool called Create React App uh, that actually abstracts away all of the uh, webpack and transpiling and all the build tools that you have to worry about. And uh, with uh, pretty much a single command line um, command, you can uh, get a React uh, site ready to go and running locally um, and easy to deploy. Uh, that's really the best way to get started with React um, today. And if you're looking at, at time to getting, uh, to getting started, uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, but that being said, React does have solid server-side rendering support. And if, you, um, if there, there is a need for, for using server-side rendering uh, on your application, there are, there are a bunch of options that you, can do for, uh, that you can take advantage of for implementing that. Most importantly, um, I think it's important to think about how you're architecting the view layer of your web application. Is the view a first-class aspect of your application? How are you thinking about 
um, how that fits into your, 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 your web stack. Um, I frequently, I think we think we think a lot more about the um, the back end side of our, our software architecture. And if we want to focus on the UI, if we want the UI to be a key part um, of our applications, we need to be thinking specifically about how we're architecting this layer uh, within the software that we're building. Um, React and server side rendering can can help you do that. It can help you think about where server side rendering, where UI uh, language, where the technology fits within uh, within your web architecture. And so I recommend giving, giving it a try. Uh, React with server-side rendering might not be the best fit for, for every application, but it's certainly another tool to, um, that we can use and something that we can think about, uh, that we can use when we're thinking about how to solve problems and improve the user interfaces for our customers. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yep. So you would generally, generally React would replace your templates. And so that's not to say you can't use them together incrementally as you're converting an application. Maybe you have part of your page in your existing templates, um, and maybe part of your page is, is using React. But in general, React replaces uh, traditional HTML templates, whether it's mustache or, or, or some other technology. And uh, what about the um, uh, server-side rendering? Uh, does that mean that when you open a browser, you cannot get to your browser anymore? Like, uh, like the client, uh, the, the user cannot see the, the JavaScript? Yeah, so the question was, for server-side rendering, does it mean the customer or the user cannot see their JavaScript anymore? Um, in general, you, when we talk about server-side rendering, that's hydrated. That JavaScript, that same JavaScript that ran on the server will be served to the customer, and that hydration step is happening on the client. So that JavaScript is being served to the client, and so that will be in the browser as well. Um, I say it's the same JavaScript is probably transpiled to two different targets, um, but it's, uh, it is the same code. So they would still have access to you know, the source code of the JavaScript there. Um, that being said, I did, um, I did not talk about one architecture um, for, uh, for static sites, which is definitely an option too. Um, you're familiar with tools like uh, Gatsby. It allows you to actually run, uh, use React to build up your UI, and at build time, generate an entirely static site, um, potentially with, um, you could if you wanted, with no, H no JavaScript at all, so it would just serve the HTML. Um, this could actually be really valuable if you, you, maybe you're making a blog site that doesn't need much JavaScript or any JavaScript at all. Um, and so you could just, in, in that case, you could uh, have a, a website that's served entirely through HTML and that you're never actually seeing the JavaScript because it's getting run on the server, just like your PHP code. So you have some flexibility, but usually when we talk about hydrating HTML, we're, we're actually, we are serving that same JavaScript uh, to the client. That's a good question. Yes, yeah, so the question is, how does uh, using server-side rendering affect the usability, or is that developer experience? Is it usability from the customer, or the developer experience? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, I think it does make it a little bit more complicated, because now you're not just running JavaScript in one place. You're, you're running it on the server and, um, and on the client. Um, and it does, if you're, writing, uh, if you're writing React and rendering on the server, you do have to keep some things in mind. It generally encourages better practices, but you can't do something, for example, like accessing window within render because window won't be available on a node service. So you have to be a little bit more thoughtful about that. React provides really good lifecycle methods for handling that. So component did mount, once the component is mounted on the page, um, uh, allows you to, to do things that, um, uh, that you might not be able to do on the server. Um, so I'd say from a developer perspective, it can be a little bit more complex. Um, there, you do have the full capabilities of the node debugger, which can use the Chrome, um, the Chrome JavaScript debugger. So you have that available to you and you can set up um, you can set up a tunnel to your server, um, whether it's on a, a VM or on, on your local machine, uh, to be able to do that. Um, I don't actually believe there's any support for like React Dev tools there. Um, it'd be really cool if there were. Uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, that's a good point. Client-side React is a huge benefit is the tooling. Um, I think you, you probably don't have as much of that with, uh, with server-side rendering, um, but that might be an opportunity area in the future. 
Uh, well, thanks for coming. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be uh, at the speaker table a little bit this afternoon. Thank you.